Hello, my name is Rain, and welcome to my channel, Realistic Fantasy Formula One. And today's video is a very special one because, well, right in front of you, you have the Fan Amp F1 Fantasy Community Survey. So, for the past week or so, Fan Amp uh, with Greg, Adam, and uh, F1 Fantasy uh, Hob Rob have, uh, together with uh, the backing of other F1 content creators, created this community survey and uh, what this is is a very exciting opportunity for us and you to leave your opinion on the f1 fantasy game and this is not just something that we've created and then you know we're throwing out there this is something that's backed and supported by f1 fantasy they are excited to see the result of the survey and will use this survey at their end of season f1 fantasy review to see what they can improve about the game for next year so we don't just want you to respond we need you to respond to the survey so i will leave the survey down below please fill it out uh in this video i'm going to be going through the survey and talk about what my thoughts are for each question but you should not copy me you should make your own decisions i have some controversial opinions about f1 fantasy but these uh the things i'm going to be discussing today are what i believe are the things that f1 fantasy needs i'm also going to bring up some things i really really like about the game because i mean that uh, I, I i often clank down on the game but i love this game and i think this game is fantastic for a multitude of reasons uh, but there are a few things that I would like to see change with the game, and this survey is where you can, can write this, uh, this all out. Now, I've already responded to the survey, so I, I can't respond to it again, but I'm going to go through each of the questions, say what I uh, what I answered, uh, and, and go through what my written answers were as well, and just sort of discuss what I think, not just in terms of the survey, but what I think uh, F1 Fantasy needs at this point in time right i will make an end of season review as well but right now what i think f1 fantasy needs uh well that's what we'll be discussing in this video so if you want to see me go through the survey then uh keep watching subscribe like the video and do the survey yourself link in the description down below let's get right to it so once you click the link you get to this uh, page and you get some information here uh welcome we've teamed up to solicit this feedback from you the f1 fantasy community with one goal in mind to compile actionable insights that can improve the game we all love uh whether you're new to the game this season or a long-standing strategist your input will arm us with the data we need to substantiate changes to the game for the better all we ask is that you're honest and constructive with your answers so don't just rant oh this happened so i hate it give some constructive feedback um if if your answer is is uh, involves too many swear words we can't really use it so uh be you know uh constructive and and concise so uh it takes about seven minutes it took longer for me because i had a lot of things to write but if you just want to go through it, it it takes about seven minutes to do so first you have some general questions uh i am unfortunately uh, no longer in the b category here i'm in i'm in the c category <laughs> uh i i consider myself uh, to be man uh where do you live i i am from sweden uh do you play uh fantasy sports uh yes which fantasy sports do you play uh i play formula ones official fantasy game and uh, i play uh, uh non motorsport fantasy games uh, as well uh i don't play any other any unofficial f1 fantasy game uh and i don't play any other motorsport fantasy game so i played i i, play, I put these two okay we'll now ask you about the formula one's official fantasy game continue all right uh how long have you been playing uh i've been playing three to four years what is your current rank in the f1 global league well it is as you can see below me 10,117 what is the primary reason you decided to play f1 fantasy uh well it's uh, actually to make race weekends more fun uh yeah that's why i started now it's to compete with friends and then to interact with the f like all of all of this has come as a second i thought i don't really do it to chance to win official prizes i think that's kind of far-fetched um if i believe to you know get <laughs> get, get first in the world but uh it's, it's so for me it's and the primary reason I decided to play was to make race weekends more fun. Now, here we get to the big things. The following are changes introduced to the game this year. How much do you feel each positively or negatively affected your F1 fantasy experience? I think this is a great question because the game is changing every year. And I think, at least in my opinion, 
all changes this year have been good changes, uh, which I think is very promising for the game. Uh, and uh, let's let's go through each of these uh, changes and, and discuss them one by one. The first one is applying no negative chip effect per scoring category. I think this is a very, very positive change. This has taken the no negative chip from being a very niche chip, like the autopilot chip, to being one of the strongest in the game. It's now really, really fun to watch a race weekend when you have no negative on because you're just wishing for carnage. Uh, it's a fantastic chip now because now you just you actually get bonus like plus points for it. And I, I don't know. I, I think this is a, one of the most, one of the best changes they they've done. Um, it's such a small one, but it's massive, and uh, it really makes the chip and the game more fun. And it is one thing that I really, really like about it. I think the chips in this game, in F1 Fantasy, are fantastic. The only one is that I don't really like is the autopilot one. Because I feel like it just kind of takes away agency. And, and again, 50% of the time it's not really useful. As it was for me last weekend. So I don't... I think every other chip in the game is fantastic. I mean, you need a wild card. I think the f uh, final fix is a fantastic thing that works perfectly for uh, F1 Fantasy. That you can't, you can't really have a final fix chip in in a different um well in a different uh fantasy sports uh that, that that's played over a weekend like it, it works perfectly for motorsport like games and i think that that's super fun i think the limitless worked great for for uh, fantasy formula one i think uh, uh what's the last one the, the 3x is also uh, you know not really interesting. It's not different, but I think I like that it's a three X and a two X. Uh, I think that's fun. So I think the chips are, are amazing in this game, and it really evolves the gameplay. Even though it's so something you know that simple, I think the chips in in F1 Fantasy are way more impactful than chips in in something like uh, I'm gonna say FPL a lot because that's the main one. I play other fantasy games as well, but the FPL is like the main other one that I that I play consistently. So. Uh, I'm, most of my comparisons are going to be to FPL. Uh, increasing transfer penalty from minus 4 to minus 10, I think this is a great change. I think uh, taking hits before was too simple, and you already get two free transfers out of your seven assets. Like, you have seven assets, and uh, you already have two free transfers a week, and save up to one for three free transfers. So, I think the transfer penalty from minus 4 to minus 10 has made uh, the decision harder. Because before, I don't know if you, you've noticed, but a lot of the time when I've talked about taking hits this season, I've said that it's not worth it. But when I've actually done calculations on it, it's ended up being close. It's ended up being one or two points in favor of one direction or the other. I've only taken one hit myself so far this season, and that hit ended up being worth it uh, by like nine points or something like that. Nine or ten points, I can't remember exactly. But a lot of the time, it's not been worth it or just barely been worth it whereas like if it was still minus four it would have been worth it almost every time i've calculated it so i think that's good because it's made it more of a decision because minus four points was too little uh compared to how many points like like it was always worth it if, if you looked this season it's like oh mercedes look bad getting ferrari in over mercedes for minus four is almost always worth it because you have two cars like especially on the constructor side of making transfers that uh, four points is, is too easy to overcome uh for constructors specifically so i think that's a very positive change adding head-to-head -head, uh battle mode uh i'm indifferent because i don't play it but i think it's a positive change because i know people who play it and who like head-to-head -head modes so i think it's good that they've changed it uh, added that right uh, adding option to pin favorite league for easy access uh i'm positive about this change because i think it's good but i still think that needs a change right uh, let's go over to the f1 fantasy sites uh, and look at some leagues right you have pinned leagues here sure right i have you know my league uh the content creators league my family league is below this right so i think it's good that you can find this but what this should be like on the front page when i click leagues uh, the, the featured leagues show up and while i don't hate these things right uh i i think these these things are good right and i mean fan and pass one right uh i think that these featured leagues should be like in a tab and the pinned leagues should be at the top also if you haven't joined the viva las vegas um uh, featured league you should uh, because you can win some prizes there so join join the uh viva las vegas league for the final three races of the season but you know, i mean th these things are fun these things are good uh but i wish the pin leagues were at the top and actually what i wish to be truly at the top is this 
why do I have to click public leagues and started leagues to get to my global rank? So I think this should be the first thing you see when you log into, when you click on the leagues tab. Then you should see pin leagues and then you should see featured leagues. But I think having pin leagues is, is, is good, at least. It, it's, 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 it's a positive change. Uh, adding the featured leagues, I think that's a positive change. I think, it, you know, uh, but it's not, I'm not overjoyed by it but i think it's a good change to uh, introduce some more community uh things and and especially i think it's great for someone like fanamp uh for, for you know people like fanamp to to have their own league featured uh because it brings traffic to their site and more people join the f1 fantasy community and yeah yeah uh increase number of mini leagues example for uh, the example is uh, shanghai showdown and then the las vegas one uh, i think that's positive uh or actually very positive uh because having these leagues means that people have a reason to join the game after it started, right? Fantasy games in general have the problem with if you miss the start, you miss the hype, right? If you haven't made a team for the first race, you're automatically so far behind and you feel like you've missed out. Adding these types of leagues means that it's a good, like, you give people a chance to join later. Um, one thing I would wish is that you got slightly more budget if you started late. Maybe... Uh, you know, if you're starting in Vegas, at least give you like 115 million budget, right? Um, I think most active managers are above 150 million uh, because otherwise you're just too far behind. But that's a that's a different problem with the budget. Uh, introducing our option to view provisional points prior to adding overtaking the pit stop. I think this is a very positive change. I think they need to further expand this to make it that the provisional points show up immediately, like. After the champagne is sprayed, I want the points. I want provisional points to be there. Then you can change it however much you want. But you know, people like F1 Fantasy Tools have provisional points up according to their calculations, super fast after the race is finished. I feel like F1 Fantasy, the official page, should also have that. Uh, so I think this is great that the option to view provisional points is there. I just wish it was there even further, uh, especially if they're going to take their time to calculate uh, overtakes. But Overall, all the changes they've added this year has improved the F1 Fantasy experience. I don't think any of these changes are bad. Uh, I just think some of them could be taken further. For example, the pinned one and uh, the provisional points. Uh, now we get to the next one, uh, question 10, which is how important do you believe each of the following features and improvements are for F1 Fantasy to implement, right? Uh, so here we have a couple of things. Uh, that have been proposed as uh, improvements to the game and whether you think it would improve the game. So, uh, it's not if you think they, it would improve it, because I think most of these would improve it, but how important do you believe they are? So, uh, let's talk about each of them. The first one is, in my opinion, the most important one. And... Yes, there are other things that are important for us who are already engaged managers. Like, I don't care about live scoring. Personally, me, I don't care about live scoring because I'm invested in the game. I'm going to check my team anyway, even if it takes three days, right? But for the game to grow, they need live scoring. And what I need on live scoring, they not. it doesn't have to be like, oh, someone takes an overtake and you get a point in the app immediately, even though that would be amazing. But once the champagne has been sprayed, you need to have provisional points in because that's when the casual fan base is going to go onto your app and uh, watch the game, right? Uh, or, or, you know, check the team. And, you know, just have the big sign. Provisional points, points may change, and you can't make transfers until two days later, whatever. That's still fine. But I think some form of live scoring, either provisional points or... Ideally, like super live scoring where you, you can see overtakes and stuff in the in the actual game, like points ticking up and down as people gain and, and lose positions. Uh, I think it would do a lot to keep the casual audience engaged with the game. Um, so I think this is very important. I think it's one of the most important things that F1 could add to their fantasy game to make it better. Uh, enriching provisional scores, posting scores faster than sessions. Uh, I think, yep, yeah, this uh, sort of adds with this. Uh, increasing access to guides. Um, I don't think this is, like, super important. I think if people, like, if people want to learn more about the game, people can search it up themselves. Uh, I think 
overall, I don't think this is an important thing for them to implement. Guides, you know, the game should just be there. And then people can look to YouTube or f there are guides, right? They don't need to increase the access to guides. They can do it, but I personally don't believe it's important for the game, uh, for F1 Fantasy to, to implement. Uh, increasing transparency around activating and deactivating drivers. Uh, I think this is uh, quite important. Um, I don't know how important, though. I think... I do think it's important that we know about it, right? Uh, they have changed it this season to how it works. And I think the change is good. But I don't think the change is perfect. But I do believe there needs to be some form of um, transparency uh, to, especially for us engaged managers, uh, so that we know what's happening and when. Uh, introducing a standalone F1 fantasy app, I think I think this, is, uh, this would improve the game. Right, and this is what I mean. Like, I think all of these things in this list would improve the game. But do I think this is important? I don't believe so. Right? I think maybe if there was a separate app and people had that app, people wouldn't forget about it. Because right now, when it's in the F1 app, people kind of forget because like the, the F1 portion of the app is a, like a it's separate thing. And People who have the regular F1 app might not know about it, or they might make a team and then forget about it. Whereas people actually, if people actually download the official app, uh, you know. But then again, I, I don't believe this is important. Premier League, for example, doesn't have a fantasy app. Fantasy is, is a part of the Premier League app. So I don't think this is important. I think it would improve it, but I don't think it's important. This, however, creating a dedicated F1 Fantasy support account slash page for game questions and updates. I think this is really important. Uh, right now, if you want to find information about the about the F1 Fantasy game, people go to content creators because we're the ones who tweet about it. The tweets about F1 Fantasy come from the official F1 page, which also tweets a million other things that has to do with the race weekend. They make like one or maybe two F1 fantasy. Like, oh, the lock, the, the team lock deadline soon. Don't forget to lock in your teams. But live during the game, I think a F1 fantasy official page would be really, really good to have. Similar to how, again, Premier League does it. Uh, where they can post like, oh, penalty for blah, 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 blah. This happens, right? Uh, and they don't need to be live tweeting throughout the race but after the race is concluded they can say this happened and then they say oh this didn't count as an overtake because this person was slow or uh this person did not get a dnf because they completed this percentage of the race distance so they only got positions lost sort of like Checo and signs at the end of of baku right uh i think this is important i think uh, this is needed for the game Increasing the number of players in head-to-head -head, uh, battle mode uh, new opponent weekly. Uh, I don't play this, so I'm going to put at um, uh, the do not know, uh, because I personally don't play this mode, so I'm not going to leave my opinion on it. Uh, then we have introduced more opportunities to win prizes. I don't think this is important. I, personally, I don't think people play it for the prizes. Some people might do, but I don't think this is important to grow the game, uh, or at least increase the enjoyment of the game for me personally. Uh, in in improving game performance, IG, a few the bugs in app uh, and or on web browser. I think it's important, of course, to uh, reduce that. But I think the game works relatively fine, right? There's been some bugs. Yes. Uh, the big one obviously uh, happened last week, or... Uh, last race weekend uh with the you know Sonoda and and Albon points after Mexico but I don't think it's a massive problem for the game so of course it's important but it, it's not of of utmost importance to fix it uh, and then we have improving the game UI and navigation uh I think this is uh really important I'm gonna put it at the uh just important section again it's it's not like the game would cease to exist if this doesn't happen but this is similar to this what i talked about here where the global score like your global league i get so many questions in comments and in live chats and on twitter where i see my global rank 
because people can't find it. Because why is it under starter leagues? I like I know why it's under starter leagues, but like these four leagues should be the first thing you see when you click on the leagues tab. Uh, but it's not, uh, and I think uh, improving the game UI navigation. Example, finding leagues and rank. Uh, I think this is... Uh, I, I'm going to click it here because I think it's really important because I get so many questions about it. Uh, so these are the uh, features and improvements. Let's move on to the next So, uh, question 11 then is the... How important do you believe each of the following gameplay updates? All right, so the, the last one were features. Uh, these are actually gameplay updates. And similarly, I think uh, a lot of these would improve the game. Uh, differs slightly from the last one is that I don't think all of them do, right? So, uh, I think the first one, uh, introducing new assets to manage, for example, team principles, I don't think that's important. I think the game, in terms of what assets we have, are perfectly fine. Uh, introducing more ships to use, I don't, th I don't think we need to. Uh, I think you can introduce a new ship if you find a fun, but it's not something we should force. I think most ships we have right now are good. I think the autopilot is kind of bad. I think... Ideally, I would just remove the autopilot and change it for something else, something cooler. But uh, I, I, I don't think we need more chips to use. I don't think that would improve the game. Uh, then we get to the big one. Decreasing DNF disqualification penalties. Very, very, and I cannot understate this, very important. Right now, at least if you look at engaged strategists, engaged players... I think it's not good decisions, it's not bad decisions that determines whether you're top 1k, top 5k, top 10k, or top 20k. I think it's luck based based on DNF and disqualifications. And I will look into this more closely at the end of the season, but especially, and I think this is a very good uh, indication for it. So we have this content creators league, right? There's 11 teams in here. Right, I'm 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 eighth. Right, I think. Right, some people are very close. Right, from me up to um, uh, up to F1 Fantasy HQ. Right, Adam, we're very close. So maybe here it's actually due to skill. But if you look at someone like Rob. Who, by the way, also his second team, who's not in this league, is like top two, top three k. He's Rob has been so unlucky with DNFs this season, and I think if we look through this, this league, right, the content creators league, and just tallied up how many DNFs and disqualifications does each player have, right, I think we would see a a, a, a pretty clear trend. And I think that, like, when you get slapped with a minus 35 from Hulkenberg, that's not skill. That's obviously unlucky. And sometimes you will be unlucky. But my favorite example of this is, take FPL, for example. The biggest ever negative score in FPL is like Jean Bednarek's minus nine pointer when South when he got he scored an own goal, got sent off, and then Southampton conceded nine goals against Manchester United a couple seasons back. Right, that was minus nine points, and that was like the biggest outlier. FPL F Fantasy Premier League has like one or maybe two of these big big stinkers every three years. Meanwhile, as F1 fantasy managers, we're sitting here having to dodge four or five of those stinkers every year. And not only that, like the regular stinkers, like just the minus 20 DNFs, are brutal. Absolutely brutal, especially considering to like the points that those C tier assets score. So... I believe this is to be the most important thing they need to change about the game. I think this needs to change. My proposition is, first of all, why does disqualifications give you more negatives than a DNF? I don't think that makes any sense at all, because it's not really the driver's fault that it got disqualified, right? Maybe it is, but then again, like, if someone's disqualified for something other than, like, I, I do believe, like, a regular penalty, like, if they get a 5-second or a 10-second penalty, I believe that should be a minus 1 point, right? I don't think negatives are bad, 
It's just the big negatives are too, way too big compared to how many points you get. I think DNFs should be minus 10 points. I think disqualifications should be minus 10 points. And then you ask, well, what about like minus one point for each position is lost? What if you lose 11 positions? That would be worse than a DNF then. No, because I think losing two positions should lose you one point. Simple change. For every two positions lost, and you can even make it so that for every two positions gained, you only gain one point to reduce the impact of someone climbing from P17 to P1, right? And not have these like 70 point scores that Max Verstappen gets, right? Uh, just reduce it. For every two positions lost, you lose one point. DNF minus 10, disqualification minus 10. And I believe the game is infinitely better. Uh, I think this is the most important thing uh, they can change. Uh, removing or reducing the driver of the day bonus, I think it's important. I don't think it's as important, like nothing is as important as, as this. Uh, they could keep this and it would be fine. I, I actually would put this as moderately important. Uh, this is like personal opinion. I don't think driver of the day should be any points. But if it is, it should be two or three points. I think there should be other points for drivers to get, such as beating your teammate, two or three points. Uh, another like bonus point type system where depending on how you've performed, you get a few bonus points. Uh, I think driver of the day could be a part of that or just be, you know, driver of the day, get two or three points. 10 points is, is slightly too big of a swing for me. Similarly to how this is too big of a negative swing. Um, but I don't believe this to be like, if they kept driver of the day the same next year, I wouldn't be upset. I'd be like, okay, that unfortunate but that's fine uh then we have capping overtakes and positions gained lost uh ig a maximum gain or loss of x points per race uh i think this is also very important similarly to this i don't personally i wouldn't cap it uh i would just change it to for each two positions you lose one point that would be my change uh but you could also cap it to minus 10 so if you lose 10 positions you you get minus 10 points the thing the thing about it is like uh why i believe it should be two positions say a driver starts p11 and finish the race in p12 has that driver had a bad race not really i don't believe they should get any bonus points for it right but does that driver really deserve minus one point for dropping one position in the race that could have been super uh circumstantial it could have been like oh the team he got overcut uh, he got undercut by one driver. Or he made a one mistake. He, he got overtaken at the start. And then clawed his way back. Like P11 to P12. I don't think that should be a minus one point. Right? I, th that's just what I think. Uh, now mine, P11 to P13. You know you've lost two positions. Maybe now you can lose a point. Uh, then again you, like, you don't gain any points for it. But I think... Uh, Getting zero points for a P P11 to P12 seems fine to me. Uh, so looking at and then again, like if you lose ten positions, should you lose ten points? Maybe because like ten positions is, is a lot, so I can see that happening. But it's just on the, even on the smaller shifts, like oh, I lost four positions. It's like uh, minus four points for going. Like oh, Valtteri Bottas, I started P15. I'm so good at the game. Oh wait, I'm driving a dustbin salver and finished the race in P19. I lost four points. Uh, really? Can we not just give him minus two points? I feel like we're being too harsh on, on Bottas here. Uh, so, uh, that's my opinion on that. Uh, adjusting starter dri starting driver and construction prices based on preseason testing. Now, this is maybe a controversial one. Preseason testing, I think, comes too soon. I think you need to launch the game. Right? Because if you launch the game, you can't then change the prices. And the question that becomes, is it close enough? I don't know. I think somewhat important. I know people who think this is the most important thing. I think the starting prices are really important. But I think there's other things they can do to adjust them. That's not based on preseason pre training. Uh, preseason testing, right? Uh, I think it's more important to like make sure constructors are way more expensive than drivers. Like, if Charlotte Claire starts the game at 18 million, Ferrari should start the game at 24 million. I don't think... Like, this year, Leclerc and Ferrari started the started the game 
at like the same price i don't think that's correct because then why would you ever pick leclerc over ferrari providing details on the pricing model uh including for inactive and reserve drivers uh i think this is this is quite important uh it's i think it's moderately important um but i don't think it's the most important thing in the world I think there's a lot of things to to price uh, with the prices that they could could change, right? Uh, and then we have introducing more performance-based scoring opportunities, IG streaks, right? Uh, if you didn't play back in like 2022, there were points for outperforming your teammates, um, or like streaks if you've done well in multiple races in a row. I think this is good. I think it's again moderately important. Actually, I could even stretch it to being only just somewhat important. Necessarily, we don't need more scoring opportunities. But if if they change things like this, right, the DNF disqualification, removing driver of the day, which I do think needs changing, then I would like to see more uh, performance-based things um, added to the game. So I think it's somewhat important. I don't think it's the end of the world if it's not, but I think it would be an improvement to the game. So of all of these, the only two, I don't think these two would improve the game i think all the other things would improve the game here let's move on so now we have uh the open question uh the open-ended questions and i i wrote these earlier right uh when i filled out this this survey uh like a week ago uh, please tell us what features or gameplay updates should be added to F1 Fantasy, including why. Now, I'm just going to quickly type something and go to the next one. Because there are two different ones, right? Uh, and I, it's kind of unlucky that you can't see them at the same time. Um, so I know I know some people uh, wrote a lot of this and then this showed up. So this is like, what would you, like, what updates would you want added? And this is what already exists that you're frustrated with. That's the difference, right? So, I think uh, let, let's let's actually start with the frustrations. And uh, this is what I wrote. Let me just copy it over. Copy it over. There you go. So this is what I wrote. Currently, the negatives are too big. Your fantasy weekend is entirely dictated by DNFs, not drivers doing well. It's really frustrating when you are happy for your Hulkenberg asset getting 11 points for a brilliant P7 drive only for you to still not gain any rank because of your Sonoda assets getting minus 20 after DNF at no fault of his own. I believe the current negatives should be changed to the following. Positions lost, minus one point per two positions. Uh, no time set, minus three points. Qualif uh, qualifying disqualification, minus five points. Sprint race DNF not classified, minus 10 points. Sprint or race disqualification, minus 10 points. Another issue with the current system are the fact that this, uh, that are the fact the another issue with the current system, the current system uh, is the fact <laughs> that uh, as an F1 fantasy strategist, you were happy when your driver is P20 and sad when they are P11. While some of this is natural and hard to remove, I would actually like seeing a new negative be given uh, to slightly compact this. Uh, eliminated in Q1, minus one point or minus two points. Negatives are a part of the game, but the game shouldn't be about hoping the drivers and constructors your friends have DNF. It should be about hoping your drivers and constructors do well. Now, I could add to this um, another negative that could be added. Uh, actually, I'll, 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 oh, uh, that's not what I wanted to do. <laughs> uh, another negative that could be added uh, is a negative one or two points for a penalty uh for a penalty in the race such as a five or ten second penalty there we go i i i think i think negatives are good right uh but these negatives are way too big and i think that's the main frustration with the game currently Good. All right, let's go to the previous one. Uh, what features or gameplay updates should be added? This slightly is also frustrations, right? But I think this is uh, more, right? Uh, what features or gameplay updates should be added? 
I think drivers should be able to get additional bonus for beating their teammate and or a performance-based bonus system to replace the 10 driver of the day points. Driver of the day could be a part of that or just be reduced to 2, 3, or 5 points. These bonuses should not be given to the constructor. In addition, I believe the constructors should only get points from each driver based on positions gained and not overtakes. As the game is set up currently, there's no reason to have Leclerc plus Williams over Albon plus Ferrari. If you've been watching this channel at all this year, you know how hard I've tried to make C-tier constructors work. Right now in the game, C-tier constructors are not viable. That's as simple as that. Um, I think the one thing they could do to uh, change this is make sure that the drivers score more points. Because if drivers score more points than constructors, or have a chance to, right? Then having Leclerc could be worth it. Say next year, like Hamilton joins Ferrari and is struggling to get the grips with the car and, and Leclerc is outperforming him. Like if Leclerc is good enough, if you can buy Leclerc instead of buying Ferrari, maybe then it would be worth it to have like Leclerc Williams over Albon and Ferrari. But right now, Ferrari gets all the points that Leclerc gets apart from driver of the day. So why would I ever own Leclerc over Ferrari? And I think that's the main problem with C2. It's not like, yes, I mean, yes, the C2 constructors are bad. Obviously, the premium constructors are better. The problem is how much better the constructor is over the driver in their own team that like you would never want to have Leclerc over Ferrari so you prioritize with the budget with the budget you have Ferrari and that's what I meant what I said earlier that if Leclerc starts the game at 18 million Ferrari needs to be 24 million there needs to be a clear increase in price for those premium constructors if Red Bull starts at 25 million Max should be 23 or 22 right Max started this this year. Max was more expensive than Red Bull when the game started, and still is right. Apart from the again, apart from the driver of the day, just having Red Bull covers Max. And the one thing is like the two X, right? You can put you can't put the two X on a constructor, but uh, even then, yeah. Uh, even then, I think the 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 benefits of drivers is not big enough uh, or the drivers are too expensive compared to the constructors so uh this is what i wrote this is again it's sort of overlapping there's some frustrations here um and and some uh things i need i think should be added here but my main frustration is the big negatives and uh this is just something i think it should be added i think we should add more points to the drivers or split the driver of the day points so more drivers get more points because by doing that automatically, uh, giving points to drivers that the constructors don't get, make the drivers better, meaning we can maybe sometimes at one point ever have a C2 constructor be viable. So, uh, it's, I guess it's a frustration that C2 constructors aren't viable at all. I think adding points to the drivers actually improve the constructors, uh, if, if that makes sense. So, this is what I wrote. Uh, let's move on. Uh, then uh, we have a few more questions to finish it off. Uh, how often do you check your fantasy team? Fantasy team? Uh, I check it after every race. Then we have, you said you play a non modus for fantasy game. Which do you play most often? Uh, the Premier League. Uh, and then you said you play Premier League. Fantasy most often. What is it that that game does well? Uh, and what I wrote here was basically just live scoring, constant feedback and interaction from their official fantasy socials. I think that's the thing that uh, Premier League, uh, the fantasy Premier League does uh, really, really well. Then, what's one thing, whether it be a feature, gameplay mechanic, or something else that the official fantasy game uh, should learn? Um, uh, and I think this is, is just the same thing here. Uh, so, I'm just going to copy and paste that. And then, uh, what's one thing, whether it be a feature, gameplay mechanic, or something that the official F1 fantasy game does better uh, than this? And why, So, if you input another fantasy game, you obviously answer that. Uh, I think um, the uh, chips are more packed, full, and interesting. Uh, and would you like to be entered to win a gift card? Sure. And then you need to fill in some uh, information here if you want to win that. So that is what I responded to the uh, Fan Amp community, F1 Fantasy community survey. I think you should and uh, go into the description down below and answer it yourself. Uh, I believe we're looking to get a total of a thousand uh, responses from the survey, and if we get that many, uh, I believe we uh, can actually make some some positive uh, change, uh, enact some positive change uh, to the game.
that we all know and love. And I mean, overall, I love this game, right? Uh, so it's it's easier to talk about the negatives than the goods. Uh, I think, again, I already mentioned the chips, but I think the entire structure of the game, I think a lot of the point scoring make a lot of sense. Uh, uh, I do think something like the budgets would, would probably need changing too, which I didn't mention too much in here, but uh, overall, the game is fantastic, and I uh, can't wait to see it grow and improve in the future. If you enjoyed this video, uh, please press like. Uh, if you haven't already, please subscribe, and... Uh, if you haven't, you should fill out the survey link in the description. You have until the end of the 2024 season to fill it out. So uh, after the Abu Dhabi Grand Prix, uh, I will see you in my transfer plans video uh, later on today or this week. Thank you so much. For, thank you so much for watching. Peace.